created a program for you that lasts more than two months. Um, and this program was specifically designed for the pandemic to give a number of singles, uh, engaged couples, uh, the time, the information, and the formation to discern properly um, the sacrament of marriage uh, before their weddings. No? Now, this program also becomes a prerequisite for some of your requirements in the parish uh, for the application of marriage uh, license. And at the same time, you may be able to present the natural family planning certificate that we will be giving you for the city hall uh, requirement. Uh, because during this pandemic, many of the parishes and city hall have not been able to provide this program to you. Now, to give you an overview of the program that we are presenting, the first day, which is a Saturday, two hours today, would, re would, would be an overview of the sacrament of marriage from a catechetical perspective. But at the same time, we will be bringing in a, uh, a couple, you know, that has been married for at least uh, 25 years. And they will be sharing with you their challenges from their first few years of marriage all the way uh, till today. Now, we've also come up with an interesting lineup of practically three Saturdays that cover communication. We have a course on couple communication where we'll, we will be discussing the temper temperaments of each of the spouses. Um, we will be discussing how to manage conflict between spouses. We have a special course wherein we will be discussing how to manage conflict with in-laws. And we will also be uh, giving you a course given by a psychologist, a practicing psychologist, on what we call the genogram. This would be, for example, how to pattern and how to trace um, issues of alcoholism, drug abuse, uh, personality traits and defects coming from either your mother's side, your father's side, or an uncle that, you know, helps you understand the composition of the spouse that you are, that you are marrying. Now, we have a very peculiar course as well um, called the Marriage Laws of the Church. Um, the Marriage Laws of the Church is going to be given by a, a canon lawyer, um, not exactly to show you how to get annulled later on, but it will teach you exactly what are the requirements that you have to look into? For example, um, what are the requirements and the checklist you need to know before getting married that your husband is not previously married before? Or what are the what they call impediments that will nullify your marriage if you did not identify them before you actually get married? Now, there will be another session given by what we call a liturgist that will describe to us the marriage rite and describe a number of nuances. For example, what are the meaning of the, the veil, the cords? So it, we will go, we will do a deep dive into the, the liturgy of marriage to give you an understanding of what is happening in each of those stages of the marriage ceremony. And since you, have the liberty of choosing how to design it and how to structure it, we will describe to you and show you which ones can be changed, which ones can be, cannot be changed, and which ones you can include or exclude in that ceremony. And we will also be giving you our two years experience of what we've been telling a number of our couples of how to do these corona weddings due to the limitation of the guests, how to do your reception, how to do your honeymoon. A number of these talks will be given either by uh, wedding planners or young couples that have gone and gotten married during the, the pandemic. We will be going through courses like family finances and another speaker and, and uh, a well-renowned author will be giving us a, an insight on the first five years of marriage. And lastly, a medical practitioner 
will be teaching us the natural family planning method, particularly on how to get pregnant, how to choose whether it is a boy or a girl, or to increase possibilities of fertility or either delaying uh, our conception based on natural, non-chemical uh, substances that we can actually apply, considering nowadays that health is one of the main priorities of ours. Now, our first speaker today is Reggie Madarang, uh, who will be followed by Gina and Giorgio Gloria. So I, I, I present and leave the stage to them. Uh, Reggie, the floor is yours. Thank you, Noel. Hello, everyone. Good morning. So, so welcome, not welcome to this uh, to this course. So, let me introduce myself shortly. I'm Reggie Madarang, and uh, my my wife right now is not here. She's in the catechism of the kids, no. So, uh, my wife Mia and I have two kids. Then uh, we we're also alum alumni of this uh, course, and uh, we're. We can say that uh, you're very lucky, no, to be to be here. And uh, Mia and I can uh, re can really attest that uh, through this course, it has helped our marriage a lot, no. And uh, we we've overcome much struggle thanks to learnings in this uh, in this course. So our first topic, okay, just just uh, just as an intro, no, just as an intro to everything you've heard. Noel talk about the many, the many things that you can expect here. It's a very intense course, on, and we want to assure that uh, your marriage will be a success, like uh, like our marriages. So we'll start off first, since we're talking about marriage. What is marriage? Okay, we'll talk about uh, the sacrament of marriage and God's design of marriage. Now it's. Marriage is not designed by man alone. No, it's actually God. So we cannot uh, we cannot uh, directly contest no what uh, what what marriage or what the practices of marriage are. So let's see. So in summary, no, in summary of my topic, if you want to think about uh, the marriage in the Catholic Church, it's basically having a having a having a relationship no with God involved in your relationship. So I'll just give a, a quick example of these uh, two two basketball players. Now, hindi lang updated yung picture ng isa. I think he's with a different team already. Uh, one is uh, LeBron. No, he's uh, he keeps saying that he's confident in his ability. No, he keeps saying that I'm I'm good. I do. I'm the best. No, I'm the greatest player in the world. But we have another one, no? Stephen Curry, who always wants to involve God in his success. Every time that he's interviewed, every time that he's, uh, he's asked what's his secret. So he keeps on involving God, saying, there's more to me than just the jersey that I wear, and that's Christ living inside me. So this is marriage. No? Your success, you live, you entrust the success of your marriage to God. You let God guide you, no. And if you ask, if you ask me, no, Stephen Curry is one of the players who revolutionized uh, the NBA, no, the way it's played. We have so many uh, players right now shooting three points outside, very long shots, and it's Stephen Curry actually one of the first ones who did it. Unlike, unlike LeBron, who who's, who plays the traditional way. No, and uh, it's because Stephen Curry attributes that to God. Okay, so what will we talk about? So we'll uh, we'll talk about what is marriage, the true meaning of marriage, the origins, five aspects of marriage, and this is the most interesting part. No, uh, maybe we we can uh, relate to this later. Differentiating the men and the ladies, what are the properties of marriage and the effects of marriage? All right. So, what is marriage? No? Marriage, by definition, if you look at the, 
if you look at the Catechism of the Catholic Church, you know, in summary, it's a very special state. You know? It's a very important state in our life you know, where it's really, it really changes everything. It really changes everything from our, from our lifestyle to our mindset. No, everything. No, it's a very, it's a very special state and commitment. It's a personal communion. No, it's a covenant. When we say covenant, we'll go to that later. It's a very deep uh, commitment. It's a very deep agreement, not only with uh, your wife but also with God. It's also an institution of conjugal love. No, when you say institution, no, it's a institution. It's a, it's a gathering. It's a sort of organization. No, made with conjugal love, where the institution is not only comprised of man, no, but that's not only composed of earthly people, but also since you're involving God, the organization involves everyone in heaven. Everywhere, everyone rejoices with your marriage. And marriage is for the good, no? It's intended for the good for the children and the spouses, no? It's not what's uh, usually advertised in in Facebook. The jokes there that uh, pahirap your marriage. It's not a, uh, it's not good. It's a, it's a not a good decision. No, marriage in its original intention is really good, no? It's supposed to be life giving, and it's a sacrament. What's a sacrament? No review. No review. Back to our elementary days, high school days, when we had the uh, when we had the sacraments as a as a lesson in the religion classes. A sacrament is a sign of God's love that are visible and can be touched. Remember, God also became man through Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ, as a man, He knows the strengths and weaknesses of man. In and He made man. So He made man. So God knows everything about man. And he knows man is really a visual person, no? visual or uh, an audio person. Being a visual person, he does not believe anything that he hears. He wants to see physical evidence first. No? So in the NBA, if you hear a weak team beating a strong team, do you believe it right away? Ah, chamba, ah, maniwala ako, di ba? I don't believe that. So you have to look, you want to look at the internet, you want to look at the newspaper, you want to look at any evidence to see that a strong team was beaten by a weak team, no? Before you believe. And God knows that, so that's why He institutionalized the sacraments. He made the sacraments so that He can make us feel that I'm here, no? I'm here. I never, I, I went up physically, but I never left you. I left you the Holy Spirit and these sacraments will remind you that my presence will continue on and on. All right? And it's the source, it's the main source of grace. No? So when we say grace, now these are special gifts from God. But it's not the type of uh, material gift, nor that the usual gift that we see very powerful, supernatural, a very, uh, it's magical, no? It's very magical grace. No, it's not like that. No, the graces that we are talking about here is actually improving our, our personality. Uh, we, we become more patient. We, we become more, we become more and more like him, no? If, uh, if before you're impatient for, for one hour, that, uh, when you receive grace, eventually you'll see that you'll become more patient. You become more patient now for two hours, something like that. No, it's not the material grace or the magical graces that poof it suddenly appears. Lord, I want a PlayStation. Poof it appears. No, it's not like that. No, that's not grace. Okay, and sacraments are all composed of matter and form. Okay, when we say matter, that's the physical. Uh, that's a physical representation that we see to assure that uh, that uh, that the sacrament is done, that 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 God's love, that the graces enter. The physical matter there is the water. Now we see the water being poured to the baby, and that's the physical uh, thing that we see. And form, no, form to 
to make it easy, I usually refer this to a formula, no? Formula na it's it's the it's the line, no? It's usually a line or the statement of the priest that makes the sacrament official. That the sacrament is sealed. No? So when the priest says, I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father. Uh, sorry, that's the confession. No? I baptize you pala. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. You're assured that the sacrament is sealed. The sacrament is done. The gates of heaven open to the baby no? who's being baptized. And for marriage, <clears throat> for marriage, actually, when we say the matter in marriage, no, it's not water, it's not oil. No? Who are the visible signs of God's love in marriage? No? It's actually the bride and the groom. You, no, you will become the physical signs of God's love for everyone to see. And marriage is a very unique sacrament in a sense that. The form also. No? Marriage is the only sacrament wherein the form is not said by the priest. The form no, used. The, the sacrament is sealed not by the priest but by the couple. The moment when the couple says, I do. No? So no matter what the priest says, no matter what the priest says, before you say, I do, you can still back out of the marriage. But the moment you say, I do, you say the form, that's it. You're giving yourself willingly to be wed, to be married to each other, and there's no turning back. Therefore, husbands and wives, you know, husbands and wives, all of us, we are called to be visible signs of God's love. You know? Just like this, uh, this is my laser pointer. Okay, just like this, you know, just like these two, no? Do you see yourself uh, walking side by side like this 50 years from now, no? You're still, when everyone sees you, wow, they're very much in love. It's like God, it's like the love of God to his church, no? So all of us, no, all of us are called to be, all of us are called to be uh, signs of God's love every day. So let's see. Now let's see what are the visible signs. No, what are the visible? What are the origins of marriage? Where did it start? Okay. So marriage, no. Uh, by definition, again of the catechism, the, vo the the origins of marriage is a vocation of marriage. Is that a vocation of marriage is written in ev in the very nature of man and woman, as they came from the hand of the Creator. No, meaning. Even before God created man and woman, he already institutionalized marriage. Now, marriage was already in the mind of God. He was already planning for it. No? Marriage is not purely a human institution. As mentioned, it was created. It was created. It was already visualized by God. That was why he created man and woman. He did not create man and man. He did not create woman to woman. No, he created God and man. No. So what was it about? No, what was it about in the beginning? No. In the beginning, no, if we read, if we read the Bible, no, in the beginning, we can see from the very start, God was already all about love. No. In fact, from our, from our catechism, we know. That God no, is not a lone person. God are three persons. No? From the start, the concept of a family is already portrayed in the, pers in the personification of God. No? God is already a three persons. No? He's, already a, he's already a family who loves one another. No? Their love for each other is very much intense. That they want to share the love with others. However, in the beginning, we all know it was complete darkness. It was only God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. No? They, love, they love each other so much, but they had no one to share it to. There was complete darkness. No? So therefore, 
they started to create no they started to create an ecosystem out of nothing no they started to create the universe no started to create the universe all of this no all of this for one special for one special planet the planet earth from which they will stabilize planet earth to create life forms no and eventually they created animals they created everything but god made something in his own image and likeness no for them to share their love to them so that is in the form of man that is adam and eve no adam and eve but despite all this no despite all the love that god gave they gave they gave adam and eve everything we all know what happened no naging pasaway or adam and eve still disobeyed god no they still made god angry so therefore sorry therefore adam and eve were banished no it's it's a uh, it's they, they were banished they were punished for their for their disobedience no may ano yan may pagtatampo rin si lord no god became disappointed i gave you everything but you did this to me get out but even with getting out no even with uh, even if they were moved out of the garden of eden did god abandon them no god loved man so much that he never left them no he continued he continued to be with uh, his people no throughout throughout history throughout the old testament this can be this can be very uh, visible no we can see this in the old testament starting from the story of the israelites and the egyptians no we can see here the very nature of grace diba uh grace is not something super na uh, magical in instantly no we ha- it takes a lot of patience so we see the story of the israelites they were really tortured they were really uh, had they really had a tough time with the egyptians because the egyptians were scared that uh, they will be uh, over overtaken no by the rapidly uh, increasing population of the israelites so they wanted to have that authority so they abused the israelites which god saw no and uh, god is really a ano a fan of the underdog no god really likes god, god really sides with the underdog ayo niya yung champion gusto niya yung uh, dehado which were the israelites and uh, during that time no his god's love no he was uh, he was struck he was stricken with pity no with the israelites he wanted to he wanted to get them out but he did not do it magically no god's love really moves in mysterious ways where to get to get the israelites out he had he had to take time and develop moses moses was the instrument no for god to get the israelites out and they went out of egypt they went out they 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 went out they they went out of egypt they went to the red sea and again no despite god's love uh, god made a way for the israelites to go out but still no the israelites were uh, were disappointed were discouraged when they saw the red sea that uh, you brought us out here just to be uh devoured by the by the egyptians no they lost faith immediately but god still loved his people okay fine even if you're like that i will make a way out for you no i will open the red sea cross it and they were again very happy thank you lord thank you very much but even even there they went through uh they they went they, they went past the red sea then then when they went past the red sea again they discovered they were lacking resources they were hungry again they questioned moses they questioned god uh, why you left us out here just to die of starvation while in egypt we had food to eat so again diba that's our love for that's our love for god for you no uh, a little uh, a little dis- a little disappointment a little uh, trial or trouble we questioned god right away no <laughs> so 
again, even with that, God uh, still uh, watched over the people. God still loved the people that he gave them food to eat, no? water to drink no? in the form of manna. Diba? We read that, in the, read that in the Bible. Until eventually, they reach they reach the pro- they they reach the promised land no so this is a very touching story from genesis to exodus of god's love for his people but this story doesn't end there no it continues no god's ultimate love is portrayed in the new testament no in the new testament even though they went to the promised land the, the people prospered they they, they multiplied but the entrance of sin really no it really it really disrupted the relationship between god and man no so god no in his ultimate love to show the people that even if you're like that i'll i'll still love you to the point of giving my only son no giving my only son to die for you no to remove original sin and to get the uh, people from hell or purgatory back to heaven where they're supposed to be. No? Imagine, no? imagine you're a God, you're giving up your only son who's also a God, and that son allowed himself to be humiliated, to be uh, to be humiliated, to be killed, no, to be killed. By, by us. No? Is that not a sign of God's ultimate love for all of us? And that love, no, that love is actually what is ex- also expected from all of us in our marriage. No? As husbands, the wives too, no? are we willing to give up everything for our partner? Are we willing to give up everything for our marriage? Just like the marriage God showcased between himself and his people. All right? So let's go to the five aspects of marriage. As mentioned, no? Marriage, as we mentioned, it's a plan, it's a vocation, it's a covenant, it's a sacrament, it's a commitment to serve, most especially. As God's plan, no? God, as mentioned, he's the author, no? No one else, no? not the other religions not the not the people who want to modify marriage no god is the original author no no one can question that that's why he created man and woman as mentioned earlier and he calls everyone no he calls everyone for marriage and to build a family no he calls everyone and uh, just like you, no? Just like you. You answered the call for uh, for God to go into marriage. And marriage, no? God's plan for marriage, that is his secret. That's why man is still alive now, no? Generation from generation, man is still alive now. It's because of procreation. Imagine if there's no such word as procreation, if there's no mindset of procreation in marriage, it's like the dinosaurs, we will become extinct. It's like the endangered species, we will become extinct. No? So that's why, if you want our generation to live on, that is why procreation is there. No? It's very beautiful. And God's plan will only work if we do, if we do marriage in accordance to what God's plan is. God's plan, simply put, is to put man and woman together no to enjoy to enjoy the company of each other and to have children that's the very simple plan but we always complicate it no we have this we have this uh mixed marriages man and man woman to woman how will you procreate with that and that is not in accordance to god's plan so that's a guaranteed formula to fail no as mentioned it's very simple plan we always we always complicate it why, do, why will we complicate it if it's very simple? All right? As a vocation, no? Marriage as a vocation, as marriage, it's a calling, no? God, no? In your iPhone, he's always calling you, no? 
so, so always calling you this is my plan no this is my plan reggie are you going to to answer it or will you go against my plan no he is calling us no, to partake of his grand plan because as mentioned we are created in his own image and likeness no we have we have intellect and we have free will no we have the intellect and the free will closest to god among all his creations so the question again will you answer it which in this pre kena with your intent to go to be married you are answering his question so congratulations it's a covenant no again a covenant is a very intense commitment not only not only with your wife not only with your relatives but it's a very intense commitment to god no it's a very intense commitment to god could you imagine breaking your promise to god could you imagine breaking your commitment to god no it's a it's a consent no you give your you give your uh, yourself freely wholly no so it's a give and take it's a give and take uh, situation but morally so no morally so focus on giving no you're giving each other so much that you're not actually noticing that you're also taking something no you're also taking something but the mindset really is in giving now you give yourself fully and again it's an institution as mentioned no it's an institution not only no not only within earthly things but also with heaven it's an institution with heaven everyone is a witness no so if if uh, if you do anything to harm the marriage all of all of heaven are witnesses that you're married so everyone everyone uh, now goes against you you're breaking your commitment to everyone no by it's affirmed by the divine law as mentioned marriage is created by god so therefore the rules that govern marriage is actually governed no by the ultimate law by the divine law which will all later be discussed na no? later on in the next succeeding topics so it's a covenant rather than a contract no later we'll have a slide on the covenant versus a contract but difference is a covenant no is a commitment to god while a contract like a civil marriage is just a piece of paper all right and as a covenant marriage knows no limits so as a covenant as a commitment it's a new way of life it's a new way of life no which entails you you're supposed to work together with shared responsibilities no you're supposed to work together that every decision that you make should be made mutual no later on no when you go to the talk of Gina and Jojo you'll see that deciding on your own no even if you think that you're doing it for the good of the family if you do it on your own there's a 95% chance it will fail no or 99% chance it will fail because you did not you did not agree to it with each other no you're supposed to complement each other no you 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 do not see everything your wife your husband does not see everything you have to make your viewpoints work together to make the best decision no so that entails constant communication no constant communication me and my wife no even if it sounds corny we been married for 8 years we still continuously con- communicate no i'm entering a meeting please pray for me i'll be late no always update each other no that's the actually that's the one of the key secrets to make a marriage succeed to make a long lasting marriage that constant communication making proactive decision no we are not single anymore hindi na tayo binata hindi na tayo dalaga no our decisions should be mutual and we should have that initiative to discern what's for the good of the other we're not only thinking of ourselves now we don't wait for the other to say that he needs this he needs that 
No, if it becomes a pattern, you yourself already know this is what my husband needs, this is what my wife needs. No, I have to get up, I have to do this. Just like Jesus, no? Just like Jesus, his proactive love for all of us. He did not, he gave himself up willingly. He did not uh, wait for the people to kill him, but he himself gave himself up to be killed. Just like that. No? And this covenant, this new way of life, is still death do us part. It's our commitment to serve. No, It's a life of service. It's not a life of ease. It's not a life of enjoyment. No, it's not a life of it's not a life of being served, ah. It's not a life of being served. Balik tadyon, no? Na pagtimpla mo ako ng kape, bigyan mo chinelas. No, it's not that, no? It's a life of service. We serve, not us being served. Just like Jesus, no? Yan. And so, as mentioned, Jesus is our standard, no? For a commitment to for a commitment to serve. And we see, no? The stories in the Bible. How Jesus served us. How Jesus died for us, how Jesus loved us, served us, cared for us. That is the that is the standard. Not not below, no? Not below that standard. It's a mutual relation as mentioned. Okay? And so seen here, success isn't a one-time thing, no? I'm not saying that this will be successful instantly. It entails a lot of struggle. All right? It should become a habit, no? And a habit is formed in 21 days of continuously doing it. All right? So it's not it's not instant. So you have to be with each other in that struggle. You remind yourselves. You be there for each other. Okay? <clears throat> yeah, the exciting part. The differences between gentlemen and ladies. So what's the difference? Or sorry, why must we why must we understand? The difference first, no? So we have to understand no one is superior to each other. Man is not superior to the ladies. The ladies are not superior to the men. Why? Why? Because whether you're a gentleman, whether you're a lady, you're both made in the image and likeness of God. No? We have the we have we both have the supreme intellect, we both have the supreme free will closest to God. No? Both of us, you cannot take that away from each other all right so but no but even if we're created in the image and likeness of god we are not as perfect as god so we will have our own strengths and weaknesses it's just like in basketball one player cannot have all the skills one player cannot have all the rules no all five players should complement with each other all right the point guard cannot do what the center does and etc the same with the, the same with marriage you no know? man cannot do everything that the lady does and their mindsets are different their mindsets are different but if you merge them together you will come up with the best decision you will be able to evaluate what is the one with the least risk what is the best one all right but this harmony, no, this harmony, this complementation of each other, it's disturbed by sin, no. The harmony uh, with man and woman is actually disturbed by sin, in particular pride, no. We allow pride to come into the relationship. We allow pride to have us think that I'm superior to my wife. I bring the money. You follow me, no. That is pride, and that. That alone will crush your marriage. Allowing pride to get into your marriage will crush your marriage. No. But let us always remember, we are actually, it is in our nature to serve. No, It is in our nature to serve. Let us always come back to the time of courtship. Diba? Nung nandiligaw tayo, when we were courting our partner, no, we were all... We're, we're always uh, allowing ourselves, no? We always give ourselves fully, no? Who experienced here waking up at 4 a.m. just to go, no? To to the person we're courting to bring them to the office, no? We wake up earlier, we attend mass with them, no? Pogi points tayo nun eh, no? We're, we're, we're giving our best foot forward, no? 
it is in our nature to serve. Now, that proves that it is in our nature to serve. We are capable of selfless love. But allowing sin to enter our relationship removes that. We become prideful. No? After, we think after everything that I've done, you're supposed to give it back. No, that's not supposed, that's not how it works. No, Only sin allows us to think that way, but it's not how God designed it. Okay? So, man and woman, again, are meant, are meant to support each other. No? Sorry. For, me, for, for men, no? For men, it's actually, men are supposed to be uh, the females, the females, uh, sorry, Ah, correct. Sorry, male, no, male, just like, uh, just like, uh, just like today's in today's society, male is still supposed to be the breadwinner, no. Usually, no, usually, no, it's usually supposed to be the breadwinner, and he's supposed to support the female, no, the lady, even, uh, even if you just look at the physical physique, no, the physical physique, men are usually brother no mas macho mas malaki no so we're supposed uh, if we're physically stronger than the female we're supposed to support them and the female no as the man supports us no so not that us no? yeah, I'm not female the ladies now with the male supporting you you're supposed to give inspiration to the male no uh, that's usually how they complement each other you inspire the male kay uh, kay Kaya mo pa yan, or what's ano, what's ba, what's what's bugging you? What what do you want? What do you want to do next? Is it still worth it? Staying in that job? No, those sort of uh, those sort of inspirations. No, why care for these differences? Again, no, again, <coughs> you're supposed to understand and accept the differences of each other. As mentioned, no one is perfect. There are some aspects your wife, your husband has that you do not have. No, you're supposed to understand what these uh, as what these aspects or what these traits mean to your relationship. You're supposed to accept. No, in the first place, you're marrying your partner because you accept him for who he or she is. All right, and do not judge on your own stick. No. Do not judge on your own stick. Imagine if God judges all of us in accordance to what we know, in accordance to our own rules, to our own guidelines, to our own measuring stick, then most likely we'll all go to hell because all of us are sinners. No? But God does not judge us on our own terms. God judges us in his terms. No? The same way God expects that to all of us no, in our marriage. We do not judge our partner with what we know, with what we love. No? But no, but we judge, but we judge each other in accordance to what God, with how God judges us. So as mentioned, and so just as ano, I'll show you traits later on. No? I'll show you traits. But uh, I'll show you later on traits. But I just want to give a disclaimer, no, that uh, this is actually this is uh, this is based on study. But all of us, no, all of us have a unique mix of traits. No, it's not one hundred percent applicable to to all of us. This is just what is seen to be common. Okay. <coughs> all right. So let's have a look at this scenario. I don't know if you've watched Kung Fu. Kung Fu Panda, because of my children, I've watched it so many times already. But there's this catchy scene, no? I'll always forget, I'll always remember this scene, no? When uh, the master tells his uh, student, let go of the illusion of control, no? Because the master, no? The, this one, this master, no? The, the raccoon always thinks that the, the panda is hopeless. He will not he will not master no he will not be able to learn what uh, what he's destined to be to do because the this raccoon always thinks of his own measuring stick no he always think of his own measuring stick he's not 
thinking of the measuring stick outside the, of maybe of measuring stick of God. No? So Master Turtle, no, Master Turtle reminds Master Raccoon, I cannot make let go of the illusion of control. No. When you have a peach tree, you cannot make it bear fruit of an apple or an orange. It will always give you a peach, no? So your partner, no matter, no matter uh, you how no matter how much you force your partner to be something, no, he will always bear a peach. He will not bear an orange. He will not bear an apple. He will always bear a, pe a, a peach, no? So Master Raccoon pushes back, but Master. A peach cannot defeat the enemy. I don't know, Tai Long, the name of the enemy in Kung Fu Panda. No? It cannot defeat, a peach cannot defeat the enemy. But the master pushes back again. It can, if you're willing to guide, nurture, and believe in it. No? In our marriage, is this our mindset? No? Is this our mindset? Are we willing to guide? Are we willing to guide? Do we have that patience? Do we have that understanding to guide, nurture, and believe in our partner, in our relationship, in our marriage? Okay? So, ayan. What are the main differences between men and women? So, I'll make this fast, no? So, in terms of body build, we all know uh, men are usually bigger than, uh, than ladies. No, mas, mas, mas macho. So usually the heavy lifting, the heavy lifting is usually being done by the men. No, and in terms of uh, use of energy, I'm also guilty of this compared to my wife. My wife can work for hours. No, my work can my wife can work for hours. Mia can work for hours without getting tired. But me, especially if I come from a toxic business review at the office, I usually. I usually uh, want to sit down for five minutes. I go to the restroom. I I drink water. No, I drink tea. No, I want to rest. No, I go to my nothing box. I want to think about nothing for five minutes before I get back to another hour of working. All right. So men are usually predictable. No, what's uh, what what you what what we expect a man does ah. Uh, if I if I tell this to my if I tell this to my boss, magagalit to. So, but before, uh, but magagalit siya. He'll get mad. But I have to have that uh, solution immediately before he gets more mad at me. No, we can predict. But if it's if it's a lady, we usually say, "What's the mood of boss today? Is she in a good mood? Is she in a bad mood?" No, expression of uh, what else? Ayan. Material, material gifts, no? Usually, the, the men and the woman, uh, the man. Usually, we think of uh, we we think of material gifts as merely objects. You know, we're given chocolates, we're given a gadget. We say, oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we're. But uh, if we don't receive one, ah, it's okay. I understand. It's the thought that counts, no? But for ladies, no? For ladies. A trick question usually I don't know if if you encountered this when you were courting your partner, uh, you see us you see someone selling flowers. Oh, you want you you want to buy uh, you want flowers? Then the lady will usually test that. Uh, no, no, it's okay. No, it's okay. Then you find out later on towards the end of the day, your wife is not talking to you. Your par your the lady is not talking to you. Turns out she was testing you. No. So it has higher, no? But these material gifts have a higher personal meaning, no? Anniversaries, birthdays. If you forget that anniversary or the birthday, you don't give a gift. That's another meaning to the ladies, diba? In terms of uh, in terms of hiding something, no? In terms of hiding something, men usually we don't hide the facts, but we usually hide our emotions. Are you okay? You come, you come tired from work. No, you were scolded by your boss. You had that terrible day at work. When you come home, are you okay? I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. No, really, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. No. On the other hand, ladies can be very emotional. They can tell you 
they can tell you everything. No, I'm not okay. This is what happened to me. Ganyan, ganyan. Do you know an office mate of mine uh, did this to me? Ganyan, 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 no? Okay? So what else? What else are uh, uh, highlights on the, on, on, the, on the differences, no? So, <clears throat> so men, no? In the, in, in, the, in the tendencies of marriage, no? Men usually neglect the emotional needs of the of the wife, you know, we as mentioned here. Sorry, I forgot to mention this. No, in terms of sense of fulfillment, the man usually has a sense of fulfillment in getting success in his work in his profession. That's how men are usually built. No, when we get an award, when we get promoted, we have that sense of fulfillment. But for ladies, the sense of fulfillment to her, no, is getting success in the family. No, if the if uh, the son, no, the, if the son or the daughter receives a medal, if there's a uh, if if the husband uh, gets promoted, no, that's his that's her joy. No, she usually thinks uh, of the she she usually thinks of the family, no, the success of the family, or even ano, even the success of a gathering, no, just as simple as that, no, a successful gathering, a successful outing. That's really important to the ladies. So with these different, with these two, those two differences, no, men usually neglect the emotional needs of the wife. No, he finds no meaning in verbalizing feelings. Basta I just have to be successful in my work. No, I just have to be successful in what I do to make my family happy. All right, for the for and then what happens? What happens? Meantime. The ladies are looking for emotional support. In the ladies are looking for uh, someone to talk to. No, as simple as that. No, because the emotions inside ladies are very strong. They want to share it with somebody. They want to share it with men. Whereas men, we want to keep to our own. That's usually the main conflict. No, so we have to be aware of this difference. For us men. To say a simple gesture to our uh, to our wife, to our partner, how was your day? How are you? No? How are you? And be ready. Be ready for a 30-minute story. Be ready for a long story, no? Then and uh, usually ladies also have this tendency to, to nag, no? To nag out of concern, no? Especially if it's just a small thing. That uh, women usually, pag uh, nasugatan, or there's a small wound, uh, just put a band-aid there. Just put a band-aid there, put alcohol, put betadine. But for the ladies, they will go deep. They will drill down what happened. No, They will go to the root cause. What happened? Why did you get to an accident? Why did you get a paper cut? What will you avoid moving forward? No, That's how men and ladies think. No? What else? No, what else? And manner of thinking, manner of speaking. Yeah, this is very evident. No, Lo being logical. No, when we're men, when we're given a situation, we usually want to step back, get all the evidence, then come to a conclusion. But ladies, ladies usually act, think fast. No, they think fast. Ah, the, the your this. Uh, I think this person is doing something wrong. I cannot explain why, but I have this gut feeling, no? Ladies' intuition, no? Woman's intuition. Kaya, uh, kaya men, if you're doing something, uh, if you're doing something behind the back of the lady, the lady usually already knows, no? She sees a different uh, pattern. She sees a different routine. She sees something different. Automatic, no? It's that intuition. Ah, there's something wrong. All right? But for men, no, as we want to collect everything, are you sure? Are you sure that that man is doing something wrong? What's your evidence? Where was he during the night of 11 p.m.? No, we're usually like that. Men are usually like that. No, and when we decide, no, when we decide in a business, no, in a business, what's the best? What's the best decision? No, what's the best decision? Men, we collect everything that when we make a decision, it's usually firm. This is it. I will stand for my decision. For ladies, no? For ladies, usually 
uh, ladies are more emotional, she takes into consideration, no? she becomes subjective and takes things personally. No? She reaches out, kawawa naman si ganito, if we will do that, kawawa naman to. But for men, no, this is what's best for us. This is what's best for the company. I, I appreciate your inputs, but I think this is what's best for us. No? Yan, to, tip common. Keen on essentials, keen on details. No? Keen on essentials, if you're in a party, you see the host. You see the host wearing a red dress. That's it. No? Uh, did you remember this party? Yeah, the party where the host was wearing red. But with the ladies, it's the red gown with ruffles and with the number of buttons like this, like this. That detail, no? That's how we. That's how you complement each other, no? That's how you complement each other. Being keen on essentials, being keen on details. You're usually, uh, you're usually, your usual viewpoint to the picture is different. Men usually have a bigger, have us have a. Have that sense of a bigger picture, no? Men, we quickly see what's the bigger picture. If we decide on this one, this is what I see moving forward. Five years from now, this is where we'll, we'll how we will be, no? But men, no, that drawback, our weakness, naman. If we see that bigger picture, we see ahead. We see we see so much ahead. We forget the little details. That's where the ladies come in, na. You might forget there's a risk with this. You there's a risk with this, no? If in a in a business, no, if we decide to venture into a new product, no, I want to in, I want to venture on skincare. I want to venture in automotive. Wait lang. Is there your wife will say, "Wait. Have you evaluated the risk? Is automotive really essential right now?" How about our finances? Are you can we take can we take a risk for four can we take a risk for one year without income? No? That's how you should complement each other. No? If you decide on your own without taking into the little details, you did not consider it. I patai, I did not consider this. Oh no. No? But if you see each other's viewpoints, okay, let's prepare for this risk. This is what we will do. Diba? Okay? Yeah, so <coughs> again, the effects, the effects of sin. Now let's go to the, the, the effects of sin. As mentioned, this harmonious relationship, when sin entered, it created that logic of domination. It created a rift. No, the origin. Okay, it now it now made uh, made us have that tendency to be detached with each other. We want to be alone. We 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 think that we're superior. I don't need your inputs. I know I'm always right. No, I know I'm always right. We always think of the past. We always think of the past. Na this partner of mine did so much bad things to me. I'm holding grudges against him. That's pride. Moving forward. Moving forward. He did this to me. This is how he will become. Moving forward, no, he will continue to do this. He will never change. I'm scared that uh, he will do this again and again. That will intensify that rift. Okay, that will intensify that rift. That you already do not understand the differences. No, you do not accept each other. No, we become so focused on the past. We become so focused on the future. We forget the present. We forget that we are married. We forget that we had a commitment. Okay? So again, no? Again, in the in that in that show in Kung Fu Panda, there's another uh, striking scene where the panda is already giving up of his training, no? So the master turtle tells him, you quit, don't quit. You are concerned of what was and what will be. No? The Panda is concerned of what happened because the master raccoon gives him a hard time. He thinks that he will never be successful. No? So the master turtle asks him, no? Uh, tells him, no? Always remember, 
Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. But today is a gift, no? Thankful. You should thank yourself that you're still alive right now, no? You're still alive in the present, no? Today is a gift. That's why it's called a present, no? When times come, that when times come, sin is coming into the relationship, pride is coming to the relationship, or even to the point of adultery is coming into the relationship. Always go back to the present. No, always go back to the good times. Always go back. No, always go back to your commitment, to your understanding. Always go back to grace. Go back to God. Okay? Ah, as mentioned, you want to become isolated already. No, you're exclusive already. Therefore, now as mentioned, differences, no, differences stress the need to complement. As mentioned, you're not 100% perfect. Your 50%, where's the other 50%? It's in your partner. All right? What one does, the other one does not have, no? And always remember, no? Do not think you're superior. Why? Aside from cre being created in the image and likeness of God, God redeemed both man and woman, no? It's not stated in the Bible, no? It's not stated in the Bible na, I will die to save the sins of men only, of ladies only. No? In fact, let us remember, no, at the foot of the cross, at the foot of the cross, not hindi lang puro lalaki nandun. There were not only men, there were all there were also ladies. There were also ladies there. Okay? Mary Magdalene was there. Mama Mary was there. No? Christ redeemed both men and ladies. Okay? And we're called to experience God's love, no? With their love for one another, no? So we're supposed to we're supposed to experience God's love, no? With our love for one another. Again, how did God what was the kind of love that God showcased for us? It was that ultimate love, not the love of being served, not the love of self but the love of service, no? the love of giving oneself and that giving oneself to the other. Just like God gave his own, uh, God gave his self no? to his church. Okay? And we have the sacraments. No? We have the sacraments to make us stronger, to heal us. Okay? So just quickly now, no? just quickly now, what are the properties of a Catholic marriage? So let's not forget, no? A Catholic marriage is permanent, no? Yeah, as earlier mentioned, it's till death do us part, no? <clears throat> it's faithful, no? Stick to one only. Stick to one only, no? I have, I always, uh, I always say this to, I always say this to my, uh, to, to, to my friends who always, uh, who always tease about, uh, who always tease, who always teases about, uh, uh, having another having another wife no i always tell them na hirap ka na nga ang hirap na nga sa isa no? it's already hard having one partner you want to add more no that's a pain in the that's a pain in the the pain in the mind no and it's not it's not a 100% guarantee that you'll be happy no moving to another person no that person will also have his or her flaws that's will you'll, you'll also uh, keep up with no, you'll also understand. No, so life is simple. Don't complicate it. No, just one partner. Understand him. No, understand him. Accept him. Guide, guide each other. Nurture each other. Help each other to grow. No, not isolate each other. Okay. And since it's procreation, no, you're supposed. Your marriage is supposed to be fruitful. Right, your marriage is not is supposed to be fruitful. Ah, oh, but you're asking me na, na but uh, what if our finances can only take this like that? No, you'll you'll if you'll uh, take that up though no, when you go to the talk of rally with natural family planning. No, but for this uh for this uh for this subject no with God's plan, God's plan really is for marriage to be fruitful. No, we cannot question that. We cannot erase children in our plans. Okay, so as mentioned, 
so as, so as, uh, so as mentioned earlier no our marriage is actually our marriage is actually uh, a sacrament meaning it's uh, it it involves god no and uh having a civil marriage is just a it's just a simple contract where we can wiggle out no it's not involving god and there's really a higher chance of uh of 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 separating no? of not being successful because you don't receive the graces of god all right and the uh, ends of marriage no as mentioned procreation no and marriage is for the well-being of the spouse okay so as mixed marriages mixed marriages are allowed no if uh if uh, getting married a catholic being married to a non-catholic so it's it's allowed no for as long as there's a dispensation from the bishop if either the bride of the group is not catholic no so if you get the dispensation from the bishop then the mixed marriage can happen and one of the conditions for the bishop to give the dispensation is the bishop will uh, oblige no will require the couple to raise the kids as catholics okay so the effects of the sacrament no as mentioned the, the spouses will obtain the necessary grace no and he can always count of the on the grace of the sacrament or the graces of god in this uh, in this sacrament all right and ito, let's remind also ourselves no let's remind also ourselves that as a sacrament no marriage is not all about personal benefit is not all about being happy struggle and personal effort is always needed okay if if we encounter if we encounter hardships no the worst thing that you can do is give up you're supposed to struggle no it's like in work you're struggling in one thing in one aspect let's say you're struggling in presentation skills you don't give up and resign in your work you work on that presentation skills you find a coach no you add your best effort i will do my best to make my presentation a success if we can do that in our work why not in our marriage all right our marriage is having a problem right now it's having a hardship struggle no that struggle will be very fulfilling when you overcome it no spouses must know how to be patient how to forgive and how to understand and let's let's not also forget the saints in heaven they also encounter difficulties they're not perfect and difficulty suffering is always a part of our life to make us stronger now we always hear this from motivational talks from bosses that a diamond is a carbon that goes through intense pressure no for our marriage to reach 50 years to reach that diamond anniversary it has to undergo that intense pressure no it's not perfect we have to undergo all this struggle no to make our marriage stronger all right and christ no as mentioned he'll never leave us we can always count on the graces no to allow us to further grow and share our love to respond in small and big marital concerns and to resist temptation all right So I'll just leave this uh, no I'll just leave this uh, messages from Stephen Curry no ang halatang idol no So idol in a sense that Stephen Curry does not believe in his own abilities alone but he always uh includes God in his success no So what does he say He says success is born not only out of your own abilities but it is born out of faith no your faith to god your undying passion no your passion your love in this case for love of his game but for the love of our marriage for the passion that we have for our marriage and for our partner and the relentless drive no the relentless drive to make our marriage succeed okay so with that good luck and uh thank you thank you very much Is that the end of my presentation? Yes, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. So, move it back to ano? Move it back to Carla. Thanks so much, Fred. 
Thank you, Reggie, for a lot of those uh, basketball analogies that you know bring to bring to earth again a lot of these very highfalutin concepts. No, I never knew that um, basketball analogies can actually help us understand these things much better. Uh, thank you for that, Reggie. Um, Carla, I think we may want to give everybody a a few minutes of a break. I think this would be a time to get your merienda and probably early lunches, just in case we extend until 12.15 uh, later on. And during this uh, break session, uh, Carla will be teaching you how to use the Google Classrooms and how to log in your uh, attendance. Carla, go ahead. Okay, so I'll be sharing my screen. Hi, everyone. So I'll just share. Okay, so here, so here you can join in our Google Classroom. So basically, a lot of you have been asking, like, will this be recorded? Will you see the um? Are you are you able to view this session when when like you have internet connection problems? Kenyan. So well, yes, we do. We have our Google Classroom. We will upload all of our Zoom recordings there. And also, if you have unstable internet, you can also view this because we're live on our Facebook page every session. But please join in our Google Classroom here. This is the link. I can send the link in the chat box as well so that it will direct. You can just click on it. But you can also use our class code. So just find the Google Class and then you can join with our class code here. So in this Google Classroom, this is we will we will also be able to check your attendance here. So here, when you look at the topics, when you go into the Google Classroom, you will see each of the sessions here. We will only record your attendance for the required sessions for your certificates, for those, for the couples here who are who joined this to get their pre-K and certifications to submit to the church. So you just choose the specific session. So for example, today it's session one, so you will click this one. This will pop up. There will be a question there. And then you just have to inform us there if, you, if you've attended together or shared, shared a device or if you, if you attended individually. Because some of the couples here um, registered individually, the right? So you use two different um, email addresses. So that means when Zoom knows na if you attended the session, if you did it, they will automatically send you a an absentee email but please disregard that if you if you've already answered this and then said na you shared a device with your partner so yeah i think that's it again just join in our google classroom we will announce um we will post their additional material as well because some of their speakers have we will have certain sessions with assignments ganon, and then others will have like reading materials for that we can share with you guys so all of those will be accessible in our google classroom here i'll send the link now in the thread the materials we will be providing you could be used for posterity's sake you know this is something that you can draw back again uh one two and three years uh, from now uh, to be able to either review or maybe just to to go through some of the the, the basics of what we had we, what we had thought um, there are pre-readings and post readings that uh, we've also provided you in case some of you would like to uh, dig in deeper through a specific topic and a number of the temperament tests or personality tests will be available as well as well uh, as sources of uh, further reading of understanding the temperaments that God gave you, you know? So uh, later on, you will realize that the temperament test that you have for your spouse, uh, you will have to graduate to using those temperament tests also for your future children. And it also doesn't harm you having to ask your in-laws for, your, for their own temperaments, no? To be able to understand them better, to know their long, love languages, to understand their personalities, and to know their kilitis, no? So these are interesting materials that you can use when the time arises. Okay. Our break, Noel, will be until 11... 25 20. or yeah, 20. I think we could start at, at, at 11.20. Okay, got it. So I'll now, just leave this here. Yeah, yeah. 
So um, as mentioned by Carla, there are six modules in Kena 101. Um, you are required at least, at least to attend five to be able to get the certificate. Those of you who are unable to make the session or, for example, in some of the cases, your, your significant other is overseas or is in another timeline, you may be able to use the recordings to watch and then maybe just write maybe three sentences or a paragraph on what you thought the, uh, you were able to pick up from, from that session that we provided or that you missed. Um, now, you know, many of the uh, participants uh, through our experience over the past 10 years um, may initially feel that the, uh, the course that we give, which is entitled uh, uh, Understanding the World of the Woman's Body or the Natural Family Planning Course, may not be something that they would want to take as early as now. But after the first and second core, uh, session with Rally Ganar, 70% of our participants realized that they need it, they want it, and they continue on four other sessions with the course facilitator. Now, because of that, we already decided to make this course free for all those who have actually subscribed for the Kena 101 session. So um, it is not uh, obligatory to attend the second, third, fourth, and fifth uh, course or session of the understanding the world of the woman's body. But um, I would encourage particularly the men to also attend the session uh, because it would be a very insightful way for you to be able to communicate better, uh, to manage your love life, and you know, get out this taboo of uh, of, um, of of being forced to have children. Uh, which methods to use? Because we've particularly selected something that was very relevant to our times, very practical, scientifically backed. So these are very practical skill sets that we're providing you for this day and age. So please. Um, the Womb Philippines, which provides this course, gives an excellent, excellent uh, run through of, of this specific topic. Now, um, many of us would not want to be meeting our psychologists or psychiatrists or family counselors as early as now, but we also try to make it a point for them to actually share their experiences or, and lessons that they would want to, pa to, to pass on to couples like yourselves, rather than hearing a lot of these messages later on in their marriages, which is why uh, our psychologist, Katrina, who will be giving the session all the way from Davao, will be giving you a number of these communication, temperaments, and genealogy courses, man creating habits and creating a... A, a some sort of a structure with your partner uh, to be able to sustain you uh, and, and create that symbiosis over the next five years. Why five years? Five years for us is practically the sweet spot for us to handhold as much of these couples attending our pre cana because the biggest chances of separation is actually during the first five years of marriage. The first five years of marriage are not exactly the honeymoon stages. These are the toughest times that couples need the support, the insight, and the understanding to be able to make it through. Make it through, not only a profession which lasts 25 to 30 years. Marriage is something that lasts 45 years. 40 to 45 years is something that you will have to prepare for, which is why having a two hour or a one week and pre cana isn't something that we strongly believe in. We believe that pre cana and marriage preparation is given to you over a lifetime. And we are trying to give you as much material as we can give in the shortest time possible. And at the same time, we create multiple events 
uh, multiple sessions and gatherings, get-togethers, for you to be able to continue that uh, continuous learning through the Institute of Marriage and the Family. So later on, as the speakers, as you meet the speakers, you will realize that there are other courses that you can attend either on laws of the church, uh, psychology and counseling, um, rearing of children, how to, how to raise children from zero to three, then another course of how to raise children of, of, of older toddlers and then teenagers. These are courses that we will be providing you, which is why as early as now, we are giving you those kinds of mental preparation for you to be open to learning and using a number of those learning experiences to your own life. And many of these ideas and learnings, you cannot apply over a weekend. You will need the weeks, the months to be able to assimilate a number of them. And this course, the pre cana course, which we provide, hopes that over a long span of three months, no, or at least in the five modules that we have, we're able to contribute as much insights, uh, learnings, and realizations that may help you in your marriage before that wedding day. Now, I'd like to pass on the stage to Gina and Jojo, uh, who will be taking on the succeeding topic. Okay. Hello. Hi, Hi. Good morning. We're just going to adjust our camera. There's, it's over. Uh, morning, everyone. I'm Gina Gloria and Jojo, my husband. Uh, and I have been married for this October 30, 19th, 30, 30 years. years. We have a, a son. He's now in his uh, 20s. And uh, we are very blessed to be part of this AIM family, uh, helping young couples prepare for marriage. Um, we've been doing this for the last eight years. Initially, face-to-face -face in St. Alphonsus de Liguri, but since this last two years have been quite uh, difficult for all of us, um, we have brought it into the online platform. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so... Okay. We go to... Um, allow me to share my screen. Great. Okay. Okay, so welcome again to our very first session and probably the last, this is the last one. For the year. For the year. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, thank you for, for taking time to attend this and putting some um, importance in your preparation. Actually, when you think about it, when was the last time any of you prepared, uh, attended a course on marriage or family in your lifetime. Yeah. Some of us uh, take years, a doctor, more than 10 years yeah, to prepare yeah. for his career or her career. Uh, lawyers as well. Even teachers have to go through uh, a licensure exam just to you know, make sure that they are equipped to teach the grade levels that they are supposedly teaching. So in marriage, wherein you're going to be 24 7 together per se and um a life-changing decision for both of you so you know make good use of these next weeks to really yeah. get to know each other even more um of course uh we'd like to emphasize that we are not experts here mm -hmm. we come here in uh, instead as a couple or yes. we come here as couples with some experiences that we want to share with you, which might be you might be able to benefit. Yes. And um, as Gina mentioned, you know, we spent two years in kindergarten, seven years in grade school, four years in college. Correct. Yeah. So and masters probably, and we're preparing for our career. But uh, we never took a course in marriage, which is a, uh, I mean, uh, the uh, uh, career probably 
for the rest of our life. Yes. You know, so... Even, I mean, this being our chosen vocation, even priests and nuns go through their own studies just to be prepared for them to take their vows. But for us who are about to be married, this is the course that we are required yeah. to take. But we hope that you take it to heart also, the learnings that you will pick up from this next week. And um, we are not the ones preparing you for your uh, journey in love and life. Correct. Uh, it, it, it's both, uh, you are both pre preparing yourselves for marriage. We are just here to accompany you yes. in your journey. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then I know uh, you should keep an open mind yes. and always focus on your be involved in your future spouse or your partner, uh, especially while going through this course. And um, always uh, provide an avenue for you to discuss and listen and uh, have genuine openness. Yes. And then the most important thing also is this would really be of great help uh, in allowing you to discern if marriage life is really for you. For you, correct. Um, uh, probably over the course, mm -hmm. the, the, the path of the course, we'll... we'll we will be showing you not only, uh, we will be sharing most of our experiences. And uh, there are some experiences that you might not have uh, imagined yet or not talked about. Mm -hmm. So probably this will be a good time. And um, also take advantage to, of this uh, opportunity and take down notes yes. so that you'll have uh, something to go back to Correct. Uh, when the time comes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, go to the next slide. Okay, uh, Carla already gave you the reminders. Okay, I will in this um in this in our talk in this module we'll we will be making use uh, from time to time. I will be going back to uh, Pope Francis's um, Amore Laetitia or the Joy of Love. This is you know the popes are very prolific and they come up with um, uh, encyclicals or writings which are apt for the times. Mm -hmm. So um, especially, uh, especially with this one, The Joy of Love, uh, it was, uh, I think, uh, done in 2016. Mm -hmm. And this was really the inspiration for us putting up in family. Correct. So um, I always, I know, maybe if you have time, uh, later on, you can Google it. You can download the PDF files or the. It's a very easy read and very uh, informative, especially for those who are really uh, would like to further read information about marriage and family. And not only that, this could be um, if you're thinking of how you can contribute or how you can enliven your faith. This would be a good uh, manual. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go through the first one. Uh, hold on. Marriage is a vocation in as much as it is a response to a specific call to experience conjugal love as an imperfect sign of the love between Christ and the church. Consequently, the decision to marry and to have a family ought to be the fruit of a process of vocational discernment. There are um, words here that are um, uh, significant, um, which I consider significant, which is, uh, it is... Uh, it's a conjugal love as an imperfect sign. As um, Reggie mentioned um, a while ago, our love for a spouse is not really perfect. Uh, we stumble along the way and we work on it. It's a continuous work in progress. Um, but it is compared to the perfect love of Christ to the church. Correct. And consequently, yeah, the, as I mentioned also earlier, this is really a vocation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we think of vocation, we think about priests, nuns, but this one really have to think of because uh, for me the vocation of marriage is uh, for us Gina and I uh, we think this is a very difficult vocation because it involves not only myself or yourself it involves your spouse and your future family. Um, I remember what my grandmother was uh, telling us ever since when when she was still alive. Um, she really says it in Tagalog. Um, Ang kasal ay hindi parang mainit na kanin na kapag sinubo ay, ay mari mong iluwa kapag napaso. Meaning, it's not like hot rice or steaming hot rice that you 
try to eat and then when you when your tongue gets burnt you spit it out so it's not as easy as that um and then another uh uh part, uh part of the encyclical which i feel is important in this talk is uh this one the sacrament of marriage is not a social convention yun as um um Reggie mentioned hindi lang siya gawa ng gawa-gawa lang natin ng tao but it's also it was created by Christ an empty it's not an empty ritual or merely an outward sign of a commitment the sacrament is a gift given for the sanctification and salvation of the spouses since their mutual belonging is a real representation through the sacramental sign of the same relationship between Christ and the church so dito ini emphasize lagi uh, in a uh, analogy niya is um the love of the spouses are like Christ's real love for the church. Correct. And then the words here, uh, it is a sacrament as uh, given as a sanctification and salvation of spouses. Um, hindi yung ibig sabihin na if you just, after you get married, life is a bed of roses. Diba? No. We are each other's ticket to heaven. Yes. Diba? So, um, so we continue continuously work on our marriage. We pray on it. We don't give up. Yun, uh, I think it was already emphasized by Reggie also mm-hmm. in his talk. And um, just to just to go back to yung being a convention, uh, the first miracle that Christ uh, made was the wedding at Cana. In this in this um, uh, miracle, he turned water into wine. Meaning, for us, God created marriage. Ele- he elevated your union into a sacrament, yes. as in other sacraments. Um, why is it a sacrament? Why, why did he make it a sacrament? Because this is where we do draw grace from, as in the other sacraments. That's why um, baptism, uh, marriage is a carryover of our other sacraments, which is baptism, confirmation. And then there are other sacraments which we can we can uh, receive continuously, like the uh, reconciliation, the confession, and the Eucharist. 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 But marriage. Marriage, of course, only once. Only uh, once. Yes. And um, that's where we draw our graces. Um, when you when we say graces, remember earlier, um, Reggie also mentioned about the consent that you give when you say "I do." The moment you say that <clears throat> "I do." The, gate, uh, the heaven's gates open and abundantly grants you abundant graces that you will use, not just on the day of your marriage, but towards the rest of your life as, a, as parents in the future, as family members, and as husband and wife. Believe me, we've been through so much already. Initially, when we got married, the words in sickness and in health, till death do us part, for richer, for poorer, they were all... Meaningful, yes, but it didn't uh, mean as much as when we were going through it. And believe me, we gone, we've gone through all except, of course, death. <gasps> so we're still here in our world, you know, going through life together as husband and wife. But we really draw so much strength from the graces we receive on the day of your marriage. In fact, when we're having challenges ourselves, whether it's our financial issue or a sickness that uh, a family member had had um, had uh, been uh, infected with, we just draw graces from God's uh, promise that on the day of our wedding, he said, I will take care of you. So we borrow the prayer from yes. uh, one of our couple um, colleagues here um, uh, that when when we encounter challenges we always go back to our to the pre uh, to the wedding at Cana and then remember the jars of water that was turned into wine wine so uh, and then the prayer our prayer is that uh, no, uh, the jars the jar, our jars are empty Lord please replenish. replenish us okay not only is it not only um Okay, not only is it, um, when we talk about um, the church, uh, we talk about this as a sacrament. But of course, here here in the material world, um, it is also given importance and value. 
like in 1948, the United Nations signed a um, a declaration stating that men and women of full age have the right to marry and to found a family. The family is the natural and fundamental group unit of society and is entitled to protection by society and the state. And then here in our constitution, Philippine constitution, the state recognizes the sanctity of family and life and shall protect and strengthen the family as the basic autonomous social institution. The state recognizes the Filipino family as the foundation of the nation and marriage is an inviolable social institution. Uh, viable social is the foundation of the family and shall be protected by the state. Um, uh, especially now that the elections is really uh, just around the corner. Uh, where all, a lot of people are preparing for that. Uh, Gina and I, and of course our son, have come up with our own criteria somehow. This helps us a lot. Um, since it was mentioned that uh, the fa uh, family is the smallest unit of society, uh, whenever we choose our leader who to vote, uh, who to vote, who leader to vote, we always look at their family. If he can. He manages his family well, and uh, then I, he's, if he's um, responsible for the little things, then probably, yeah, he's um, capable of uh, leading the nation. That's our, that's our basis. Uh, okay. Now we go to some stats. Okay. Um, I, although my data is not yet that updated, but you can see the trend, no? Uh, we don't have a separation or divorce here. Uh, we only have, uh, well, legally, civilly, I think, Civil. we have separation, legal separation. Yes. But with the church, uh, we don't have divorce. We don't have separation. We only have a, a uh, certificate of, cert nullity. of nullity, huh. meaning that the, the marriage did not exist Correct. or is invalid. Mm -hmm. So, um, as you can see, the figures here registered from 2008 200, uh, to 2017, uh, there is a um, quite a, a significant drop in terms of the number of uh, um, uh, registered marriages. Okay. Um, just to let you know, just to make you see that this is not just a, uh, uh, a mere statistic. What we decided was to come up with um, couples, uh, sample couples in, in their different stages of uh, marriage yes. and um, people who are closer to home, people that we know. And just to share with you, here is one. Okay. Vikmar and Gurley. Uh, their story is, uh, Vicmar, probably if you're going to get married in St. Alfonso, you meet in Magallanes. In Magallanes. Um, Vicmar is um, uh, the, the outer Sir. server and outer, uh, outer assistant of our parish priest. Uh, at first, he was, for many years, um, he's been serving the church. But uh, little did we know that he had the slightest problem. When his kids were about to, when, when his kids were... Growing, they keep on asking how come uh, they haven't been invited to activities in his work. So we didn't know that um, he already was uh, living with a partner and already has kids, but he's not married. He's so scared to uh, mention this to father because he's scared he might lose his job. But uh, finally he decided, and then we everyone was so happy in the community. and. Um, we even organized a small wedding for him. Yes. So after that, um, you can see the smile in his face, and then we finally met Gurley. Yes. <laughs> so everyone helped out. The community helped out. Yes. And then we have uh, and Jean and Cecil. Mm -hmm. Mother and daughter sila. I worked with Jean in... Uh, in one of my projects at work. And um, when we got a bit, uh, when we got closer, uh, we were talking about family. 
And um, she finally told us, and of course, I asked her permission if we could share her experiences. This is one type of family and marriage wherein um, they were left by their, well, Jean was left by the father and Ceci was left yeah, by sure. the husband, her husband. But <clears throat> since they were left to fend for themselves, uh, they were able, uh, uh, with the grace of God, they were able to establish themselves and become independent individuals. Despite, mm-hmm. despite single, the, the mom being yes, a single yeah. parent. Yes. So they're from Tugigaraw, and uh, the mom is now uh, is now uh, in a uh, very successful venture in insurance. Jean is uh, an art management major, and um, she does a lot of things and helps in art fair also. And they're both independent. And uh, for them, they were able to hurdle that part of their family and marriage life. Then, okay, um, this is... Wing. Wing and Mila. A typical uh, uh, FW common, common in the Philippine situation that uh, the husband or the wife, they have, uh, they, they have to leave to, to be able to give a better future to their children. Okay. So usually, negative yung naririnig natin, we don't have that because napapabayaan yung family and, uh, you know, things like that. But in this case, um, they're a happy family and, um, uh, I guess it's important that the foundation of the father and the mother is already established before they, they go yes. elsewhere. Weng, when, and, Weng and Mila are both married in church. Church And um, Weng uh, right now is also very fortunate to have a job. So he, to have a job abroad despite, despite the, the pandemic. pandemic. So In I fact, think, in the midst of pandemic, he was home for vacation. He was called right soon after, within last year, for his next assignment. Uh, so he never really lost his job during this yeah. whole pandemic. Mm-hmm. And they um, they attribute all of this and mm-hmm. their family life because of the, the graces and blessings they receive on the day of their marriage. And their children who are all happily settled because of the strength yeah. of the mom who keeps the whole family together while yeah. the dad is away okay. working. And um, I, I, although I haven't met, uh, see, one of the daughters kasi, who I work with in, in, in the store, and uh, um, from, her, from her stories, and the, the dad and the mom have really uh, worked hard to keep the family together, yes. special occasions. And then they were young. They, had, they have a lot of fun memories. Yes. And of course, humor is important. The, the dad's so funny. And so they, I think they inherited all of that. The so, joy of life. The, yes. Yeah. So, yun. The next one is, yun, ikaw yung magkwento. Okay. Um, this is, um, well, Danielle is their daughter. And uh, let me just, okay. Tim Kim. and Keith were also our pre Kena students. Um, to, I think it would be more more or less six years or seven years ago. And um, Tin and Keith are very successful in their careers. In fact, Tin is a good lawyer and working for a very <clears throat> good firm. Uh, Keith works for a computer yes, company so. and he from time to time goes abroad for his work. They were very active in terms of their careers and profession, but soon after they finished our program, they came to us and said, you know, as soon as we are settled and married, we would like to start our family right away. Okay. Initially, they were they, they were not to... uh, they wanted to give themselves some time before they <clears throat> settle and start uh, having a family. But soon after they got married, Tin was um, well, as you would call honeymoon baby. Uh, Danielle came about and um, they said, you know, she was born prematurely. But because of what they've learned from their pre-K uh, program, they were able to withstand the challenges that a marriage would have if they were not prepared Pay for it. it. Yeah. Um, they said, you know, they drew so much from the cha- from their challenges. They drew so much strength from their marriage, marriage vows. vows. In fact, there was a time while uh, Teen was still um, uh, pregnant, 
Keith had to leave for a few months, like two months, for three months. Yeah, I'm for, not training, mistaken, for training in abroad. Singapore. Uh, and she said, you know, we took it to heart, uh, the language of love. Uh, when we were packing his things, I surprised him. And for every day that he was going to be gone, I placed sticky notes of uh, in messages. His clothes. <laughs> yes, in his clothes. And once he unpacked his clothes in his apartment in uh, in Singapore, Singapore, he, he would, posted each one he on on, on, a, on mirror. a mirror so that each day he would read his inspirational message from Tim. Um, it was not a very easy. Um, birthing for Tim because they also had to leave Danielle in um, in the, the hospital, hospital for a while so that she could fully heal and rather develop. Um, but you will see in the next photo that Danielle, though she was prematurely born, is now a thriving young girl. In fact, she is doing everything from arts to sports. And of course, before this whole pandemic had started, they have traveled with Danielle. She may have had started with some premature um, uh, uh, slow. Uh, there, there were some uh, um, delays in her in her in her development. Okay. But uh, with God's grace, she is basically now up to par and is doing well in her studies. She studies yeah. Yeah. and she's very healthy. Now. Healthy, yes. Our next one is Chet and Chet Marge. and Marge. Another um, couple. Another couple. They're they're both. Into publishing and uh, journalism, yes. they're both writers. And uh, one, there was one time when March was assigned in India mm -mm. for an assignment to stay there for a, a week or two, sent by a, a company. And then it was unexpected. Um, she had a an aneurysm, mm -hmm. and she was hospitalized. She couldn't go home. So Chet was home, left with the kids, and the kids were at the time. Uh, in their teens. In their teens. Oh, 11 pa nga yata yung oldest yeah, mm -hmm. at the time. And uh, um, he didn't know what to do, but he prayed and um, uh, he decided to just leave everything, give, give instructions to the young boy. And of course, he had relatives also. He had, a brother, he had some brothers and some siblings so, to take care. But he immediately left. To a place he didn't want to go to, and India. he and he didn't even know anyone there. Yes, in India. And uh, of course, March was hospitalized, and the company that sent her was taking care of her uh, hospital of uh, logistics. logistics uh, yes. So he was there. He didn't know in a strange place. Um, when he arrived, um, he first he was looking for a church. Apparently, just where he was staying, there was a nearby church. Yes. So he heard the bell, morning bells calling for mass. Uh, before he, going to the before hospital. Before going yeah. to visit um, his wife in the hospital because they're not allowed to stay overnight. Yeah. And then he walked in and all of a sudden he was able to attend uh, his yeah. first mass. Yes. After yeah. the mass, some nuns followed and, and, and greeted him and said, what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. And then before he said, uh, before he could say anything, they invited even him to have breakfast, breakfast. with them. So he said on that particular day, he felt he was not, not just nourished spiritually, but, but he was physically, physically nourished. nourished. And he did this for the succeeding it days. Was a it became a routine. a routine. So he had food to eat uh, and before going to the hospital and then back. So that was a routine. And yes. then the wife improved a bit and then she was transferred to a bigger hospital. Yes, in the big city Which, of Delhi. Yes. And from there... The same routine started again. He was trying to look Uniform, for another yeah. church where he can go to mass closest to the church, to his place of where he's staying and the hospital. And soon enough, luckily, he was able to find one that he would go every single day. Short of it, um, Marge was able to recover. In fact, he wrote a book called 88 Days, Days in India. India. So. And she, he was able to bring her home. And as you can well see, this is already after her attack. She is... Um, recovered, okay. yes, recovered. Although you will see when she starts walking, she has a bit of a limp and some delay in her yeah. in her uh, For, thought process. Yes, right? and um, aside from that, uh, according to Chet, maybe it's God's grace, God's grace that I think she's not able to experience pain, mm. pain and sadness. I think yes, that so, part of that, her the brain. part of her brain. Yes. So. So it, it it is a divine providence. That's why um, what what stayed with her is the resilience to improve, to work hard for to work hard in her rehab. And um, di lang yon, may nangyari pa. Oh. Yeah. So, ito yung ano uh, nangyari. She she was 
No, their yeah. house got burnt first. Yes. Um, their house got burnt, and um, of course, everything went with it. So um, he stayed with the siblings and, you know, tried to pick rebuild. up the pieces yes. and rebuild, rebuild himself and built another house later on while working. So it took a while. And then finally, they were able to move to a new house. And then something else happened. Um, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. Uh, breast cancer. So I think now she's in remission. Yes, she's back to good health good and health, well-being yeah. once again. But it is an example of what a family and what a marriage went through, you know. And, and it's exactly what I was saying uh, in sickness and in yeah. health, uh, for richer, for poorer, till death do us part. So they are quite an example of that kind of a marriage. Yeah. So, okay. Continue. So, last but not the least, least um, uh, this next person is a widow. She's my mom. And um, uh, she keeps the family together. Um, I, what was very vivid uh, to us, this uh, previously, uh, before, before, um, before my father passed, she passed around five years ago. In the hospital, when my fa father was sick, um, she was always by his side. Even in the hospital, she practically lived in the hospital. And we were talking to her if we could you know, um, take turns. But of course, she didn't want to. So I don't know how. It is through prayers and her resilience. She never showed us that she was sad or disappointed or mad. But she was always her cheery self. And uh, after that, um, she was able to take care of my dad for his last uh, remaining moments. And uh, after that, she still continues to care for us. Yes. Uh, doting, a doting grandmother to six grandchildren. Mm -hmm. So, what do these... Marriages have in common. Uh, these marriages, of course, they all drew grace from their marriage, uh, the sacrament of marriage. Um, the sacrament of marriage, as well as the other sacraments, um, provide a grace that empowers you to overcome trials and obstacles. And um, it gives us hope. Yes. In, uh, we always go back to that prayer, Lord, our jars are empty. Please, Please replenish us. So I congrat in advance. We congratulate all you couples who have uh, decided to elevate your union to a marriage. A marriage. Um, of course, let's not forget in the wedding at Cana, diba, um, There was it wasn't Christ who said, "I'll change water into wine." Somebody Probably got into him. the got into the picture, and it was Mother Mary. Yes. And then the buying words na and then, um, bring this. To him, to him, and he will know what to do. Yan ang sinabi niya. So, always have a devotion to Mother Mary. Yes. And if we need anything, she's the, the strongest and the best intercessor to our Christ. So, probably rosary, angelus, di ba? Visits to Visit all those, church, And even those attending having... Mass together. Attending Mass together or having a small image of Our Lady, even on the small side of the house. So once in a while, when you see an image of a lady, you glance upon her, upon her yes. and say hello. Okay. okay. Ah, so just to show you where it happened, the wedding at Cana, it's now a church. A church, church was built, built on, top on top of, of the very place where the wedding of Cana took place. And thankfully, Georgia and I were blessed. On our 25th wedding anniversary, we did a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. And thankfully, as well, we were able to exchange our vows there in the very church where we were, uh, where the first, um, uh, where, uh, the first uh, miracle, miracle yeah. was uh, created, or rather presented itself. Okay, now I go again to the, the joy of love, or Amoris Letizia, or Pope Francis. He says there that mutual self-giving in the sacrament of matrimony is grounded in the grace of baptism, which establishes the foundational covenant of every person with Christ in the church. In accepting each other and with Christ's grace, the engaged couple promise each other total self-giving, 
faithfulness and openness to life. I think um, Reggie gave you a glimpse of that uh, in his talk. And uh, when we say, I mentioned also a while ago that it is a continuation of the uh, a carryover of your baptism and confirmation. And um, and he talked about, I Reggie talked about covenant, covenant and, uh, okay, just to give you contract and, contract and covenant. So just to give you a, 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 an easy, a simple uh, analogy is that a contract is, it's transactional. You give something in return for, for something else. While in a covenant, you give something or you promise to give something. Without, without expecting, expecting anything, anything in return. return. In fact, if I put it in Tagalog, if you if I if Your. I may you know, normally when you say that in Tagalog, it sounds even more uh, meaningful. I promise myself, actually, sinusumpa ko ang sarili ko Say kay Jojo. At siya ay sinusumpa niya ang sarili niya sa akin. So that's the promise, that's the covenant that you exchange on the day we of your wedding. wedding. And sometimes sumpa, when you think about it, that's a negative connotation, especially in our language, uh, in Tagalog, it means a curse. But actually, it's not. It's not. This is sumpa, which is a promise. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, usually, we ask our, um, um, we ask our participants, um, what is the greatest gift that you could give your spouse on your wedding day? And there, we have a lot of uh, very, very beautiful and, answers. Uh, answers. And um, of course, love, love comes out. You know, when you listen to the radio, you know, when you think about what is love, what, what, what is love really? Mm -hmm. And uh, when you listen to the radio, the best explanation could be probably if, if love is expressed in, you listen to Spotify, just type in love and you, and you see millions of probably songs and a lot of playlists that would Mention love, but uh, sometimes love is um, abused or taken for granted. Yes. So what what is love really? Um. Uh, I we get it from the scriptures, no? John, chapter three, verse sixteen. God's gift, God's gift is His Son. It is also a gift of Himself. So He gave His only. Son to us, a son to us to die for us and to, to you know, answer all the debt of our sins. Yes, remember when we, when uh, Adam and Eve were banished in the uh, eternal garden, it was our heavenly Father's Son Jesus who took back that you know that uh, banished uh, uh, circumstance of all of us. So now we are able to say because of God's uh, Jesus's dying on Easter. We are all able to unite back with our Heavenly Father. So this gift of, of, of our Heavenly Father is what we know uh, represent how, how you know the person, which makes it even more special when you give yourself to the other. Okay. Um, you're willing to even die for, yeah, the part of our question, are you willing to die uh, for the person, person beside, next, to, next you. to you, your spouse to be? So those yes. are the questions. It's easy sometimes. Yeah, it's easy to say yes, but when you think about it, if it really happens, well, it's difficult. It's quite difficult. difficult yeah. Yes, it's not an easy thing to, to say that I'm willing to die for my spouse next to me. But when you really think about it, each of us women who are going to bear and carry our child for nine months, we're actually already putting our lives in some sort of danger because, of course, you know very well that giving birth is not no easy fit as well. So, uh, as Reggie mentioned, he touched on it a while ago. Mm -hmm. What is love? What is love? True and total love. Well, he, uh, let me put it again in three ways. Uh, love is there. We call it the goods of marriage. Love should be, true and total love should be exclusive, exclusive. perpetual, and procreative. Okay. So when we say exclusive, it's just one person, one true love, no other love in different ports or different cities, as they yeah. say. Just purely the person that you choose to marry on the day of your marriage, that's 
the person exclusively to him or to her. To her. Um, I'll just mention an anecdote again. A friend of mine consulted me a long time ago and uh, they had a fight, yung kanyang wife and uh, they, I think the wife was shopping in a mall and then magkasama sila and then he decided to wait outside while uh, the, the wife was, you know, uh, checking out the merchandise inside. So, the wife caught him looking at at uh, the women, especially the, the ladies that are passing, passing by. by. <laughs> and then, she suddenly stormed out of the store and asked him, you know, aren't you embarrassed? You're not ashamed that I'm even here and you're looking at other women? And then what the guy said, I, I couldn't forget. He said that, in Tagalog, I'll say it in Tagalog first. Um, alam mo, ang mata, maraming nakikita. Pero ang puso, isa lang nakikita. Ikaw yun. So, saying that, short of saying that, um, the, the eyes can see many, many, but the heart sees only one. Mm. Oh, wow. So, okay. sabi ko, hmm. Uh, but of course, uh, syempre, hindi naman natin yung advice. Yes, <laughs> kidding okay. aside. Okay. Exclusive, perpetual. Um, nobody has come back from the dead and say that uh, I saw my wife there, I saw my ex there. Um, so we can only say that till death was part or up until our last breath. Kaya perpetual, up to our last breath. Okay, procreative, uh, as Reggie mentioned, it should be fruitful. Uh, you, with the plans of having your... You're, you're starting your own family. Yes. But, um, of course, uh, later on through the, the course, um, you'll be given ideas on, of course, how to space because you're the only ones who can determine when to have a child. But, of course, with the grace of God. Oh, God. Yes. Uh, so, spacing, uh, spacing, you know, it will be talked about by uh, uh, Our Rally, Rally Ganar, Ganar. who will be talking about. So, these three goods of marriage should exist all together. In a Catholic marriage. Hindi pwedeng isa lang. So, for example, um, let's see. Uh, using of uh, contraceptive. When you love someone, di ba sinabi natin, love is you give all of you. You empty yourself for the sake of the other. You give yourself totally. Like in Tagalog, once again, it's nicely heard. Buong puso at kaluluwa ko ay binibigay ko sa iyo. So, uh, the use of contraceptives. When you use a condom, for example, uh, you're not giving yourself totally to the person. Yes. Um, you're still holding back something, mm-hmm. right? mm-hmm. And um, so, even if you're you have um, exclusive, you're she's the only one or he's the only one. Then perpetual, meaning till Guilty. your dying breath, you cannot be. You cannot start a family. Okay, so. Uh, it doesn't. It, it they all don't exist. Mm-hmm. So um, same with sex, uh, sexual, same sex union. Even though they love each other exclusively, um, perpetually, but biologically, they're not open to life. But kahit anong gawin mo, they won't be able to. Yeah. Have, two women cannot. Yeah, and all create procreate a child mm-hmm. or two men cannot mm-hmm. procreate a child. So, in church, that's in our faith. Um, that's why uh, it, for the church, it's, it's not true in total love. Yes. Now, let me share with you um, an excerpt from a book of uh, Justice Artemio Panganiban. You know, he wrote the uh, Nung sa spouse-in-law, he wrote the foreword for, for this book. Uh, the four, the four rings, rings of, of a happy, happy marriage. marriage. So, so, the wedding ring. The wedding ring signifies uh, eternity. No, no, beginning. no beginning, no end. Mm-hmm. So, till the end, guys. Till that till death, death was part. part. Then we come to the part of caring. Caring is... Um, Surrendering of oneself to the other. And um, when you say caring, uh, the I dies and the we and the us are born. Mm-hmm. Right? So all decisions become consensual. Um, 
Uh, and uh, In fact, when you think about it legally, once you're settled and married, whatever the other person owns, the other one is also 50% um, responsible for it, which is why even before we get to the marriage in church, we already have the contract signing of marriage contract um, in the civil part of your marriage mm -hmm. because it is to protect also the union of both husband and wife. And wife. So these are the reasons why every, all decision-making should be done by both. Because sometimes maybe the man is thinking, you know, this is going to be good for both of us. But a woman's intuition and instincts can help in the final decision-making. And um, of course, then sa caring then, um, I'll, I'll uh, let you know, I'll tell you a, a bit of a story. Uh, there was this uh, bride, uh, there was this grandfather and um, a grandchild who attended a wedding. And uh, I guess the, the parents were sponsors or ninang And then um, the, the child was so curious, he kept on asking questions. He said, why is the bride wearing white? And um, the grandfather answered, uh, because it's the happiest day of her life. And mm -hmm. she's, um, it's the happiest day of her life. And then, um, and it's a, a special day for her. And that means she's pure. And then, so... Why is the groom wearing a black suit? Is it the saddest day of his life? So um, the grandfather chuckled but said, yeah, you're right. But of course, black may signify death, but more of it's the dying of oneself for the sake of the other. Dying means in, meaning uh, he will do everything in his power to and, and, and forget all his... Um, needs and look after the needs of the wife mm -hmm. and secondly he's he will stop looking at other women and promise that will, he will only look and love his wife so mm -hmm. yeah nice explanation by yeah. the grandfather. Well, grandfather and then we have sharing the moment they say i do they enter into a conjugal partnership which is what i mentioned yeah here. So assets become conjugal and communal and neither can enter into mortgage or sell or give away any communal property without the consent of the other. Okay. Then the, together, the couple will fix their home, manage the household, and exercise authority, parental authority on their minor children over their minor children. Yun, yun yung sharing. And the last? The last is offering. Offering is... Um, well, I, I I quote Bishop Fulton Sheen uh, when wow. he said that he, he wrote that it takes three to get married, husband, wife, and God. So after the not, the state intervenes to, go, to govern your estates, your personal property, uh, property relationship. Then, But God blesses the union to make it last through the years. There will always be problems, difficulties, obstacles that you have to hurdle, but now. Uh, God is the final arbiter. Yes. So, to sum it all up, these are the four essentials of a happy marriage. And with this, we end and our talk. Our thank, talk. Yes. Thank you and hope you were able to take, take, out, uh, take home a few things from what we shared with you today. Yes. And we'll see you again next, next week, week for another topic on Let's Get Real. I now turn over the floor to Carla. Carla. And for any questions, for please. Uh, Noel. Yes, for Noel and Carla. Please, I think uh, so much, I think the chat mm -hmm. Amazing talk as always. I'm sure like everyone was happy to like learn a lot from you guys and like to see the different couples that you presented today. I, I'm always amazed with their stories, even if I've heard it like a couple of times now. It's really amazing. <laughs> let's just see Thank you, if we have questions though, because I think yeah, let's wait a bit. Baka gutom na sila. Oh, But uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, sorry, they have to leave. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Well, I don't see any questions so far, but anyway, there are more weeks ahead, more Saturdays to uh, listen to and maybe then they might have their own uh, okay. questions. Wala, no questions. Okay. okay. But so yes, I'm just like, 
announcement. No? So, eh, eh, should you have any questions for Gina and Jojo, we'll be seeing more of them in the next few sessions. And then we also have our Google Classroom for you to just put anything there that you want to discuss or ask, and then we can always tackle it. But again, please join in the Google, Google Classroom so you have access to all of our materials that we, that we have for you. And we also have, if uh, once you exit this Zoom webinar, we have a short survey just so you can let us know um, how it was. Uh, the link is also in our Google Classroom there so you can submit like baka you have pointers for us that we can improve on for future couples or singles that will join our talks. Oh, wait, we have we have one. I think we can answer one question. No? Uh, sure. Where is it? Ask uh, no. Q&A. Okay. Yes. What if Hello, or what whatever? If for whatever reason, procreation is not possible. Will it not be considered true and total love? Okay. Uh, what if, what for whatever reason? Okay. Um, is this, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll share with you two scenarios. Okay. If um, this is discovered before getting married by any of the spouses, the so therefore, yet, they, they, yet, they, they, no, but they have to disclose it first to first, each other yes. that uh, one of them is not capable of having children. Mm. Now, if you, so then you can, you can um, discuss this issue and find a resolution. Mm -hmm. um, but after you get married, and that's the only time, you find out that one of you uh, is not able to conceive or not able to, you know, contribute to the procreative process. That um, sense. Uh, then uh, probably don't kababalik sa marriage vows mo through sickness and in health dapat magkasama kayo Correct. and there are other options for maybe adoption will be, can be considered um, like in our case Gina, Gina and I we, we thought we only have one child who is now not anymore a child. No. Yes, but it was not my choice. We really wanted <laughs> to have more, more children, but I had a hard time conceiving. conceiving. Oh. In fact, when we were trying to conceive and I was having a difficult time also in the process, we, Georgia told me, you know, if in the end, this is what God gives us, that we will not yeah. be able to have our own child. Um, I will love you till the, Till my and, last breath. And that was enough for me to say, okay, maybe we can do something in the future that will help us in deciding if we will go into adoption. But you know, two months after that, when Georgia and I had that heart to heart talk, I got pregnant with Gio. So that was three or four years after we got married. Right? Yes, three oh. years after marriage, so two months and, after the talk. Yeah. And then afterwards, I got pregnant. But I thought that after that, it will be, you know, snowballing. I can have more kids. Would you believe that was it? So we are blessed to have him. He was our miracle child. But it doesn't necessarily mean that if you are not given an opportunity to be a father or mother in that biological way, you are not considered true and total love because you tried. You know, and you're and trying, but the opportunity does not seem to... Uh, allow it, but there are other means, as Jojo had said, yeah, you can we, go for adoption. And then um, we, I assured her that it doesn't make her lesser of a woman. If, yeah. uh, <laughs> if, if uh, she, she, because syempre, it's a uh, full circle of being female because you're the one who, who gets pregnant and gives birth. But uh, of course, I assured her that it doesn't make you less of a woman yes. if, if you don't get pregnant. So, but of course, and daming prayers and yes, um, and if he only met if he only if he only met uh, Rally. Rally that time, he will. You know, we could have worked ourselves up, and we, we could have tried his method. Yes, because um, I have a condition. In terms of fertility, yes, which is which yes. he will be talking about. Yes, yeah, abangan yun. Yes, it's very important, yeah. and it will also see, show you the beauty of the human body, especially that of a woman. So when there are moments in your in your, your, you know, as, as, as a married couple, you can you don't feel like at this moment you're ready to, you know, have a child. Riley has some suggestions on how you can, yeah. um, you know, handle yeah. that circumstance and situation. And for the man, your spouse to be also to know what a human body of, I mean, what the woman's body is capable of. So in a way, you're helping each other in taking care of your Health. Health. Yes. And um yeah. 
Yes. So I hope I, we were able to answer yeah, your I hope question. We were able, Michelle, we hope we were able to answer your question. Yes. Any more questions? questions? Oh, thank you. Thank Arina. you so much. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, yes, I, I think yeah. we can end today's session. And, yeah. okay. okay. Thank, thank you, you, everyone. Have thank a good have weekend, a good weekend. And take care. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week. Same yeah. time, thank same you, everyone. All right. Thanks, Gina, Jojo. Thank you, Noel. Thank you, Reggie.